So this recording will be available like the others in uh if you want to access it, it'll be available uh by request in the LMS uh, LMS uh you know uh, additional material at the at the <coughs> lower part of the LMS. If you scroll down, you will see uh these type of lectures are <coughs> recorded lectures are uh, uh available there. <coughs> okay. So well, joint procedure, like I was saying, <coughs> done for multiple reasons. One of the reasons that we are seeing here is uh, the degenerative arthritic changes. This is <coughs> a normal looking uh, femur and head of the femur rotating in the acetabular or hip socket. Uh, <clears throat> and here you see the changes took place. The smoothness of the head of the femur uh, became very rough and it's got a lot of uh, uh, round protruded uh, uh, area. Which is de which is actually arthritis, arthritic cartilage, and the cup is also looking very rough, and it's not a smooth <coughs> surface against uh, the not the smooth surface rotating in this ball joint. So every time this uh, uh, person's hip, uh, in this illustration, this hip. Uh, rotates or moves, it causes uh, very bad excruciating pain. <clears throat> and this is a typical degenerative arthritic process. Uh, only remedy is <clears throat> to cut this uh, head of the ball of the femur off and cut the stem where the arthritic changes uh, has taken place and replace the stem, the part of this area stem, neck, and the ball of femur with a prosthetic implant. And the cup also revised by reaming, and we put a cup uh, as a prosthetic implant also. By doing that, again, we <clears throat> reconstruct this hip joint where two prosthetic smooth uh, implants are going to rotate and function uh, without causing any pain. <clears throat> and also this dysfunctional uh, 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 hip joint uh, is going to become uh, functional again. The person will be able to weight bear, the person will be able to function like before. Uh, for uh, a long period of time. <clears throat> Damages also can be done by, uh, as you have seen before, by uh, trauma. Injury can cause uh, very bad type of hip damage, like you see here. <clears throat> The neck of the femur is broke here, fractured here. Uh, if the fracture is uh, in between the trochanteric line, greater trochanter, attachment for the muscles, and lesser trochanter, attachment for the muscle. And if it fractured through this line, then we call inter trochanteric fracture, or below this line, if we have somewhere in the shaft of the humor, we call subtrochanteric fracture. All of these type of fracture also can be reconstructed with a uh, major uh, hip uh, replacement surgery. We call, <clears throat> we call that 
uh, Austin Moore. <clears throat> Austin Moore is a simple uh, autoplasty of the stem of uh, the femur and uh, the head of the femur. And it's a, uh, the stem and neck of femur and the, the head of femur uh, replacement surgery, but the cup uh, is not damaged. So the cup, uh, acetabular cup is left uh, like before. Nothing is done to the acetabular cup when you're doing a Austin Moore uh, uh, surgery. And a surgeon may decide, well, Austin Moore is not good enough. Uh, in this case, the person is aging and uh, we need to do a uh, replacement for both areas, the cup and the femur. So in that case, they can use a uh, uh, prosthetic implant for the cup and the hip stem, like you are seeing here. In that case, we will call that, uh, not Austin Moore anymore, we will call that either uh, bipolar uh, arthroplasty, depending on the movement in between <clears throat> the components used in between these two <clears throat> implanted area. So as you can see here, when the total hip arthroplasty is done <clears throat> uh, in this hip on the left side, uh, you see there is component going inside the femur, the femur, femoral stem, we call it, and we have a, a, a head, the ball of femur, that is uh, in place on the stem's neck. And then we have a cup, which is uh, redefined and a cup liner uh, is, uh, cup is, implant cup is placed there. So <clears throat> total joint uh, replacement surgery, arthroplasty. So done to improve range of motion, <clears throat> stabilization, and mostly to relieve pain. Resurfacing, reshaping, and replacing the articulating surface. So where to uh, structure articulates that creates the joint and reconstructing that the surfaces we uh, get a new uh, we put new metal prosthetic implant or polyethylene uh, implant and uh, we get a uh, new <coughs> reconstructed joint <coughs> solid component uh, which is uh, where one stem, like the one that you have seen uh, in this previous uh, uh, illustration here, that one stem uh, versus multiple components uh, can be utilized in order to have a uh, total hip arthroplasty uh, surgery. <clears throat> so when we have multiple com uh, component, we call it modular system. When we have one solid component, we call it solid component or Austin mode. If we have multiple component, they're attached uh, they are placed uh, in the joint. We call it modular system. Okay, now here are some 
uh, examples of implants. <clears throat> On the uh, left side, and actually you can see uh, multiple components or modular hip system. First, you have a stem. It is a femoral hip stem. And we have a head, femoral head, that goes inside that the stem, neck will fit inside that femoral head. And it fits very tightly. Then we have the cup, acetabular shell we call. That's the acetabular cup. It's gonna make up the acetabular cup. Then in order to rotate this <coughs> femoral head inside the cup smoothly, we have a <coughs> liner. We call it acetabular liner. So liner will fit <coughs> inside this shell. When we have all of these together, put together, then it is going to look like this. This is a bipolar hip, stem, head, liner, and cup. And we have a new reconstructed joint. On the other hand, we have uh, what we call hemiarthroplasty or half uh, reconstructed joint. In this case, only the stem is replaced, not the cup. You can see here is a femoral stem in place inside a femur and the femoral head uh, there together and it is rotating at the natural original uh, acetabular cup. This is half replacement, half reconstruction. That is why we call it hemiarthroplasty. Whereas this is total reconstruction. So we call it total hip arthroplasty. Now the cup and the hip stem and the head of femur uh, kind of looks like this when they are in place in a bipolar uh, uh, hip reconstruction surgery or a bipolar uh, hip replacement. <clears throat> Total knee replacement uh, is also done. Most of the time it is done for only degenerative process. Uh, for fracture management, the knee uh, is usually plated or uh, a rod is in placed inside. Uh, but uh, when the degenerative process uh, makes the knee uh, completely dysfunctional, then we uh, do total knee replacement surgery. Here, the distal part of the femur, this is the femur bone, thigh bone, and this is the distal part of the femur. And below, which is rotating with or uh, joint is created with tibia. This is proximal part of the tibia. And we have a fibula at the lateral border of tibia. Now, femur tibia makes the uh, femoral uh, uh, the, and tibial joint <coughs> surfaces. Now, as you know, the femur uh, femoral distal part <clears throat> has a nice smooth cartilaginous connective tissue uh, or we call it uh, condyle created by this cartilaginous tissue. And tibia, the surface, the top surface of the tibia also has cartilage 
uh, which looks like C, and it's smooth and shiny cartilage uh, covering the surface of the tibia. So that cartilage protected tibia and cartilage protected condyle of the femur rotates uh, as a hinge joint. So it can rotate, uh, it can uh, move around uh, without causing any bone uh, erosion. And degenerative process also uh, destroys these nice smooth cartilage and causes this type of <clears throat> uh, very, very atrophied bone surface of tibia and femur. When we have these arthritic changes, like you see here, normal uh, area, and this is abnormal arthritic changes, it is very painful. And the patient <clears throat> cannot function with this type of knee. That is when the surgeon decides to uh, reconstruct this knee and put a uh, <clears throat> synthetic femoral component, a <clears throat> uh, femur distal end, the cartilage, uh, the condyle is changed with this femoral component and the tibia, so the top surface of the tibia or tibial plateau is changed with the tibial component after recutting recutting this uh, two edges. And then to form the ACL and posterior crucial ligament, we have a uh, synthetic spacer also. Femoral component, spacer, and the tibial component makes up the uh, knee uh, reconstructed uh, knee. So <clears throat> this procedure, total knee joint replacement, also can be done as half knee replacement. <clears throat> Means the one side of the condyle uh, could be replaced, one side of the tibia could be replaced, the other side of the femur and tibia uh, could just stay the same because uh, the reason is maybe <clears throat> the arthritic changes what took place in that patient uh, is very severe on one side and the other side is still uh, very well maintained. When we have half of the knee reconstructed, then we call hemi-knee arthroplasty. Now, as you can see, mm, the reconstructed hip or knee or shoulder could be two uh, types. One is <coughs> Uh, without cement or non-cemented, we call it press fit biofixation, or just press fit, where the surface of the implant uh, grows tissue inside uh, through that uh, implant, allows tissue to grow through that uh, and maintain a strong uh, solid stability. The <clears throat> surface has uh, designed to have uh, <clears throat> calcium phosphate or coralline hydroxyapatite to uh, synthetic uh, component which allows the uh, surrounding bone to uh, grow and incorporate this uh, implant. 
other category that we have is uh, simply cemented hip, where polymethyl, methyl, metacrylate, uh, polymethyl, methacrylate fixation is used. This uh, PMMA or polymethyl methacrylate is first uh, mixed in a uh, system on our back table. Then it is transferred into these type of, let me show you the cement gun. It is mixed on our back table. Then we put this, uh, pour this glue-like polymethyl metacrylate inside this gun, cement gun. And with this long nozzle, it can fill the gap of the intramedullary cavity. When it does that, <clears throat> with the use of this type of cement gun, we have uh, cement in place inside of the medullary cavity and then we can uh, uh, put the let's see. then we can uh, we can actually have the implant uh, impacted with a implant uh, driver. So the implant, after the cement is uh, used to uh, fill the intramedullary cavity, right here, what you see here, intramedullary cavity. Then this implant, the stem is, uh, placed inside this cement filled intramedullary cavity with the use of a impactor, hip stem impactor or hip stem driver and a mallet. So surgeon will pound this stem in very tightly. It should fit uh, this intramedullary cavity and the cement, when it solidifies within few minutes, that is going to keep, that is going to uh, hold this stem uh, like a solid uh, one component. The stem will be uh, uh, reconstructed inside this hip area, uh, the stem part of the hip. Uh, with the use of cement. And similarly, <clears throat> cement can be placed inside the cup area also, inside the uh, cup area. After the cup is reamed with the cup reamer, the cement can be placed inside and this shell can be pressed uh, tightly against that cemented uh, cup. When the cement solidifies, it holds that shell uh, solidly uh, uh, together with the hip cup. So then we have a cemented uh, arthroplasty uh, joint. Now in this case, uh, Cement has been used in the stem area and also in the cup shell area, acetabular cup and the medullary cavity of the uh, femur uh, has been uh, reconstructed with cement, cemented implant. This case, it is uh, a uh, cemented total hip reconstruction surgery. But what if we use cement for the stem only and
don't use any cement for the cup. Like we use screws maybe. Right here you see screws. In that case, we call it is a hybrid implant. Stem is uh, reconstructed with cement. Cup is reconstructed with screws or other mechanical form or maybe graft. So by hybrid hip, hip replacement surgery. Other uh, category is bone graft using uh, auto graft or allograft from the frozen uh, homologous graft bank. We can line this uh, uh, surface area. And uh, we can line this surface area with the bone graft and then press the cup shell against that bone graft very tightly. You impact it with the impactor and a, a mallet very tightly to uh, create a bonding. And when the bone graft uh, uh, goes through the, the incorporation process or bone graft incorporates with the, the original bone structure and grows and that growth mechanism will tightly hold the shell as if the shell is part of the original uh, acetabular cup. So that is another technique the surgery orthopedics joint replacement surgeon can do. Now, dislocation. Uh, joint dislocation, uh, which is displacement of the uh, two articulating surface of the bone from the joint capsule. Uh, because of tendon, ligaments, and muscles could be weak or could be damaged. Now, when the joint is dislocated, then surgeon will allow uh, the patient to uh, relax, use of medicine, a uh, little bit of sedation, and whether they don't feel anything uh, moving around with that joint, then the surgeon, uh, using the technique, uh, reduction technique, they put the joint surface back together. When they put the two uh, articulating surface of the bone back together, into the uh, joint capsule, we call it close reduction. When surgeon uh, cannot reduce these two uh, component of the joint uh, by turning, by rotating, by abducting, adducting, all these techniques, then they have to open it, cut open the layers of the uh, tissue and expose the joint. And by open reduction, using a fixation component element uh, called internal fixation, they will, uh, they will repair this dislocation of the joint. So, Dislocation of the joint uh, is a common problem. Uh, we see people, patients come in in the operating room with uh, their shoulder uh, uh, hanging outside of their shoulder uh, glenoid capsule. Their hip is replaced. Uh, hip is uh, uh, dislocated from the hip cup. So 
these are the way we can reduce the dislocated joint. Dislocated joint of ankle or repeated uh, problem with the ankle uh, and gait because of the joints are not stable in this ankle. This joint can be fused together using bone graft or staples or screws. Arthrodesis uh, is the name when the uh, joints are fused together. Uh, and this arthrodesis of a joint can be done using implant or screws, or simply you can use, a uh, surgeon can use bone graft uh, to uh, fuse this joint. Here we are seeing a ankle joint is being fused. We're seeing tibia and fibula here. Fibula is uh, fixated with the uh, tibia and tibia is held together with the uh, bone, which is the tailless bone uh, with screws and bone graft is placed in between and after a few weeks, this joint will be fused together. Done because of multiple uh, reason, uh, frequent non-union uh, bone fractures, we see that is a problem. Any type of tumor or any type of imbalance of muscle and uh, deformity of this joint can be fixed with the arthrodesis. Triple arthrodesis means three joints are, uh, uh, are fused together. One joint between fibula and tibia, joint between tibia and talus, joint between uh, fibula and the, the tip of the talus. So three joints are fixed or fused together. So mm, okay, so joint replacement surgery is a major uh, 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 part of the orthopedic orthopedic surgery, mm. right? Now, sports medicine related surgery or using arthroscopes. Arthroscopes basically means arthro, joint, and scope. You put these two uh, prefix and suffix together, you get arthroscopic. So you are seeing, uh, visualizing interior of the joint. Mostly it is done for diagnostic and also some treatment where surgeon wants a quick recovery, uh, no hospital stay, and uh, uh, also, uh, the incisions are not more than few portal owned like this you are seeing a couple of less than few millimeters uh, wide uh, incisions are made they're kind of like a nick and through that uh, portal hole the whole surgery of the arthroscopic knee surgery can be done here you are seeing a patient's in this illustration, you see a patient's uh, left knee is being scoped. Uh, here is the uh, sleeve, and 
uh, sleeve has two stop cock and the, the opening of the sleeve, the telescope lens is going in and the camera is attached to the, uh, the lens. Light cord, this blue light cord is attached to the lens. This is the camera cord, the black one. And the light cord is hooked up to the monitor uh, cabinet where light source and camera uh, uh, unit is there. And then we need to inflate this joint, we need fluid. And here they like to use lactated ringer solution, which is coming through this tubing into the stop box inside of the joint to inflate. As you can see, this knee is inflated with the solution of lactated ringer. Most, uh, mostly they use that. Surgical tech is standing across from the surgeon and waiting to provide the next instruments holding it on their hand. Uh, this is the trocar that goes in the obturator that goes inside this uh, sleeve. When they change the location of the sleeve, they like to have the obturator. They like to have, take their telescope out, put the obturator in, and then change the portal. Uh, it helps the sleeve with the obturator uh, to go in smoothly through the layers of the tissue. First, what they do, they make these incisions. Then they use this type of uh, portal uh, needle. Uh, we call it fluid uh, inlet needle. And then we inflate the joint with the fluid first. Once the joint is inflated, then we use the sleeve, telescope, camera to see. After you can see everything inside, then we make these other incisions uh, uh, under direct visualization and use uh, instruments through these portal to do the treatment, do the surgery of the cartilage or meniscus or maybe torn ligament that needs to be removed. Mostly uh, the use of shaver, use of punch, uh, pituitary rongers, uh, uh, they remove the diseased or traumatized cartilage, meniscus, or ligament structure, which is floating around inside the joint, causing a lot of pain. Now, otoscopic instruments and equipments uh, comes, the instruments comes in a otoscopic tray. In that tray, uh, you'll find um, trocar and cannulas. You'll find stopcocks. You'll find uh, instruments like probes, like hook. Uh, the probe or nerve hook that is used to uh, to actually uh, uh, touch or move or uh, dissect structure inside the uh, joint. Then arthroscopic scissor, arthroscopic punches, and arthroscopic grasper. Uh, these are very, very thin, narrow, uh, and long instruments so the surgeon can uh, use it inside the joint using these very, very small uh, 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 cannulas of the uh, cannulas which goes through the portal. Then they need 
arthroscope, which is kept in a separate uh, little uh, safety tray because this scope is delicate. And uh, if you don't maintain and preserve this scope in a, a shock proof uh, container, this scope can damage the lens can be damaged, the fiber optic uh, part can be damaged, and that will cause uh, uh, and a lot of you know repair expenses and also disruption in the process of arthroscopic treatment. Fiber optic light board and camera uh, can be stored uh, inside a camera box. Uh, or can be uh, packaged separately. Light cord can be packaged uh, inside the tray of this arthroscopic instruments and the camera, video camera can be uh, uh, packaged uh, separately. Because uh, the camera uh, and this endoscope, the arthroscope has to be sterilized uh, in a different method, uh, which is normally, uh, these days we use sterile, which is hydrogen peroxide plasma uh, uh, medium sterilization process. Uh, and the arthroscopic instruments, uh, trochars, cannulas, and all of these manual instruments in that tray, that tray is sterilized through uh, steam, uh, regular steam sterilization process. So because of the delicate nature of the camera lens, arthroscopic lens, light or sometimes, uh, the, the sterilization methods are used uh, differently. So you will find the SPD, Stereo Processing Department, will send you the tray with all of these instruments that you require or any type of scopes that you do. And uh, you have to then uh, get the cart. We call the arthroscopic unit or video cart. Now, modern day, these days you'll find hospital has these uh, Card uh, ceiling mounted. They are mounted on the from the ceiling, and you can use them in the room uh, whenever you're doing arthroscopic surgery. And there are some rooms which are uh, specialized, which are uh, uh, specifically designed for arthroscopic surgery and kept for arthroscopic surgery, sports medicine repair only. So on, uh, if you're working in that type of facility, then you don't have to go get an arthroscopic unit. Otherwise, uh, we have video camera, and let me show you what the arthroscopic cart looks like, system looks like. We will have a cart like this with on top, we'll have a monitor, we'll have light source, uh, we'll have arthroscopic camera, the video recorder, and here uh, we have shaver also. So light source, camera, recorder, monitor, arthroscopic instruments like shaver. And this car that we're talking about, is required for arthroscopic surgery. Now, let's go to uh, arthroscopic shaver. Arthroscopic shaver uh, is this uh, instruments. This has a plug-in and the cord and this uh, handheld area. 
which has a suction port and the tip, you can load these arthroscopic shaver blades. There are assortment of shaver blades uh, used for many different functions. Some of them are cutter, some of them are uh, or like abrader, works on the bone to abrade the bone. Some of them are uh, simply uh, 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 suctioning device. It sucks the uh, the free fragment, synovium, and uh, uh, bursa, it is uh, fluid. Uh, and some of them simply uh, smooth the cartilage, uh, uh, the end of the uh, edge of the cartilage, it smooths out. So the shaver has many different diameters and also small because of we have small joints like ankle and we have large joints like even the hip can be done. Uh, we can use the shaver for hip joint also. So we load, we open, circulator will open this uh, to the technologist. Technologist will uh, accept this and take it from the container using sterile technique and load this onto the shaver uh, handle. Then technologists will pass this in to the circulator to hook it up to the monitor you have seen previously. And this end, you are going to give it to the surgeon while you hook up a suction TV at this end. So surgeon will use this shaver blade to shave the inside of the joint. See all these floating uh, synovium, cartilaginous thing that is floating around inside the joint. These areas that the bone is exposed, all of these things can be repaired using this shaver. Uh, uh, this is a very unique design. It's going on for many uh, decades right now, and it is getting better and better. Uh, uh, the use of shaver uh, really saves time and also is very, very effective when you are dealing with a uh, corner and edges, which is inaccessible even through the open surgery. So this is uh, a, let me show you, yeah. this is a, uh, one of the uh, monitor that is placed here uh, across from the surgeon and they are now using shaver and the camera through the scope looking inside the joint and everybody is uh, looking and the surgeon is doing the repair inside the joint. So you can find surgeon a uh, technologist here and the assistant or medical students is observing. And you can see how the Mayo stand, one of the Mayo stand is laid here and the tubing, uh, the necessary uh, suction tubing and uh, items are placed on that Mayo stand as the surgeon requested. So this is typically a view of arthroscopic surgery. Now, if you find that a surgeon is uh, going to incise, going to make incision uh, through the layers of tissue and open the joint, then we are doing arthrotomy. Arthrotomy is opening into the, into, opening into, incision into, and arthro, arthro is repair is a joint. So joint opening into, incision into a joint. This type of surgery, as you can imagine, you need retractors. Army Navy here, a S retractors here. Mm. Assistants are exposing the knee joint. You can see the shiny uh, area of the 
femoral condyle that is kind of visible here. The patella is right here. This is the patella. And this is the patella ligament is retracted. The, the, uh, the other side, the medial collateral ligament, which runs from the femur to the tibia, that is also retracted uh, downwards and the surgeon is exposed the area where the anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament supposed to be there. So they're repairing the joint by opening it. So that's autonomy. When you do any types of joint open, uh, open joint surgery, uh, then you can tell that the surgeon is doing autonomy. So you have to uh, get ready for uh, open instruments and uh, retractors, uh, bovi, suction, uh, rongers. Uh, you may need osteotome, curettes, uh, depending on what your uh, surgeon is doing. You have assortment of other orthopedic instruments that is available in the orthopedic tray. Uh, you can open that orthopedic tray and uh, you will have all the necessary instruments for orthopedic uh, autonomy or open procedure for orthopedic cases. Now, after the surgery is done and a reduction is done, joint reduction is done, or a fracture is repaired, either with uh, a closed uh, repair procedure or a open, uh, open reduction internal fixation process. Surgeon will order cast application. Cast is uh, available in fiberglass material, very light, and you may have many different colors, and also plaster cast, which is the, the, uh, the, uh, the conventional cast material. Uh, cast can be slow setting, medium setting, or fast setting. So depending on what the nature of the cast the surgeon uses, uh, you can use the cast material and padding material, stockinette material, webral, and uh, uh, water uh, for the cast uh, to uh, material to form. And this is how the surgeon will apply the cast to immobilize the uh, bone here. To immobilize a bone, uh, that is why the cast is being applied. Now, type of cast that we find are listed here. We see these are the few examples of cast application. Uh, we see the body of uh, the and the leg, hip type of cast. We see upper vertebra, uh, neck, cervical vertebra, thoracic vertebra is encased in the cast material. Uh, the hand is, uh, hand, uh, wrist joint is immobilized. Hand, including the elbow joint is immobilized. Here, a knee joint is immobilized uh, with the uh, uh, ankle, heel. And here is the knee joint immobilized with the cast material. Now, cylinder or circular cast. 
very common for leg, upper thigh to ankle, and ankle joint and the foot will not be included. It will be up to the ankle, cylinder type of circular cast. Hip spica, which is the torso, and the leg or legs, hip and femur fracture. Minerva jacket, hip all the way up to the head, cervical or upper thoracic vertebra. Plaster splint, which could be posterior splint holding the, the extremity and secure that plaster splint with bandages like rubber ace. So here is the hip spica, Minerva jacket, uh, posterior splint, and this is cylinder cast. So these are some of the uh, useful casting applications that you can see. Now, casting requires these instruments, and these instruments are not sterile. Since the cast is applied after the dressing is in place, after the surgery is done, dressing is in place, this material uh, that we use for cast application and cast removal, they are not sterile. They, you will find them in the cast cart. You get the plastic uh, plaster knives like this. You get a plaster scissors, bandage scissors like this, electric cast cutter, uh, cast spreader. You will have this type of cast spreader, uh, cast bender. Uh, so all of these instruments are stored in the cast cart. So whenever you're doing orthopedic case, you know you're going to need them at the end of the case, so we get the, uh, get these cast card in the room. When we are uh, repairing uh, or redoing or removing uh, cast material from a previous surgery, we're going to need this cast cutter and cast spreader and the bandage scissor because we have to cut the uh, dressing with it. All right. So we need to know where these cast cards are kept. Usually we have orthopedic storage room where video systems, arthroscopic uh, supplies, implants, and the, the fixation device and cast uh, machines are probably kept. Complications of orthopedic surgery, like other uh, uh, like all other surgeries, the complications uh, is also a major uh, cause for orthopedic surgery to fail. When uh, a surgeon is impacting the medullary cavity inside the bone uh, for a stem insertion or for a rod insertion uh, for fixation. This thromboembolism uh, can happen. This happens uh, uh, very frequently uh, than we can imagine. I have uh, experienced this type of thromboembolism caused a accidental death in the operating room for uh, one case. And usually thromboembolisms can be avoided by a very delicate 
application of uh, the intermediary cavity material. Uh, if they go, if uh, the orthopedic surgeon, they know uh, thromboembolism, which is a clot, blood clot, uh, which starts to float and go and lodge in a uh, area uh, like in the heart or in the brain uh, to block the oxygen supply. Thromboemboli can break off from the uh, marrow of the bone and slowly along with the blood uh, come all the way up to the heart and block the coronary artery or come all the way up to the uh, head and block carotid artery, internal carotid artery. And that will cause either a heart uh, a cardiac arrest or a uh, stroke. If the anesthesia uh, detects it early, then that can be prevented and which happens most of the time, anesthesia detect, detects it that the patient is coding by looking at the EKG monitor uh, and EEG monitor, uh, they can see what is happening. They're frequently, uh, constantly monitoring the patient and tell the surgeon to stop and they will then uh, use thrombolytic uh, the anesthesia will use thrombolytic solution or medicine to break down this clot. So thromboembolism is a big problem in the orthopedic surgery because orthopedic surgery is about pounding the implant with a 10 pounds mallet, putting the nail inside using a sliding hammer you know, there is a lot of, you know, force involved. When the orthopedic surgery is done, then the patient is confined on a bed for long period of time. Sometimes it could be a year when they have complicated multiple fracture. And during this time, when the orthopedic patients are not walking, not moving much, their lung uh, uh, gets inflamed. And then we call it pneumonia. When the lung function deteriorates, the body function also goes down along with it, and the patient may die from pneumonia. This mostly happened to elderly people with their weak lung function. Urinary tract infection. That is because the person is going to stay uh, confined on the bed and they will have uh, to use the, the, the urine catcher and they will not have a very clean uh, urethra uh, while they're on the bed doing the urination. So urinary tract infection uh, is a problem. Skin breaks down where uh, the tissue is traumatized and the skin uh, breaks down for trauma or for uh, missing uh, skin because of uh, nature of injury. And uh, degenerative arthritis patient, they tend to have uh, very, very bad, uh, soft, fragile skin. So when the orthopedic surgeon and the assistant uh, retracts, holds on to this extremity, the pressure uh, is enough to break the skin. When the skin breaks, those people require another surgery 
uh, for skin uh, repair and the skin uh, graft. Big problem in orthopedic surgery is infection. Osteomyelitis, the joint infection with uh, a microorganism like Staphylococcus aureus. When this happened, osteomyelitis happened, that is a limb threatening, joint threatening, and light threatening uh, condition. Osteomyelitis, if it is not treated properly, then this infection goes throughout the body because the joint is connected to the blood and blood takes the infected uh, microorganism all around the body and the body becomes septic. We call it septicemia. And then the person will go through a shock and usually in a couple of days, the person, the patient will die. If the osteomyelitis uh, uh, destroys the joint, the person's limb uh, could get infected and there will be no uh, way to uh, get rid of the infection if it is too late. And that is when the surgeon has to amputate and that would be a limb threatening condition, the joint or uh, limb necrosis then can be take place uh, can take place after the joint is infected with microorganism. That is why orthopedic surgeons are very very paranoid about uh, stero technique, stero field, uh, about using laminar flow using multiple, ga uh, multiple layers of gloves and making sure you are uh, uh, really pro uh, at this uh, stereo technique. Anytime they find a new technologist or student or a new employee working for them, First few weeks, they keep that person under surveillance. They will closely monitor and uh, even uh, they will do some uh, checking whether this new employee or the student knows uh, thoroughly and uh, without making mistake, uh, this person can uh, maintain, prevent uh, the uh, any uh, problem with stereo technique. They can maintain, they will maintain the stereo field throughout the procedure, throughout the case. They will protect that stereo field throughout the case, and they will be 100% uh, uh, trouble-free stereo technique that uh, these orthopedic surgeons uh, wants to uh, you know, make sure is uh, happening to the new employee or the student. So that is why they challenge the new employee or the students about stereo field uh, or aseptic technique. They will closely watch. They will be very skeptic. They will uh, say, uh, ask questions. They will uh, sometimes will, they will ask you to uh, redo uh, certain things, certain setup if they don't like it they will ask you to reset up from the scratch because they want to make sure their stereo field is 100% safe, not going to cause any infection, causing 
the uh, the failure of their orthopedic surgery. That will cause a lot of money for malpractice lawsuit and also patients, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, life and limb would be uh, in danger. So that this is uh, our orthopedic uh, related uh, surgery. And now I'm going to show you uh, how a person's Let's change that shared screen with this. How a person uh, with a hip fracture is placed on the uh, this orthopedic fracture table and two sterile person will put a sterile isolation drape on this hip. This is the hip that needs to be repaired because of fracture of the hip. And as you can see, the patient's torso is placed on this fracture table. The buttock is hanging. There is a post going in the uh, groin area in between the legs to stabilize the patient. That is why this post is not letting the person slide down. The leg, affected leg is on a uh, leg or foot holder properly aligned uh, so that the fracture is uh, uh, managed or reduced and the non-affected leg is abducted and placed on a leg holder way from the affected leg. This table is uh, radio uh, lucent, so they can use CR uh, to see uh, through this uh, area, through this hip fracture. And this isolation drape will allow the sterile field to create and the surgeon to work here and the x-ray can do their c-arm bring in their c-arm uh it will stay on the other side of this this isolation drape uh it will stay behind this sterile isolation drape so this is how isolation drapes are placed over the bar and all these people the team member that you see, they're reaching uh, over the bar to place that isolation drape with the help of a circulator, will change their gloves uh, for reaching above the, uh, the shoulder level. <clears throat> This is how a uh, hip also can be draped called free leg draping system. Free leg draping, as you can see, uh, the foot and all the way up to the knee is covered with a sterile impervious stockinette. Then an extremity drape, which has a hole in the middle is placed through this leg and placed against the hip that needs to be operated. This extremity drape will cover the torso and the uh, bottom of the uh, foot of the bed. That is another way of draping the hip when the patient is placed on normal operating room table. So this is not a 
fracture table surgery. This is a normal operating room surgery. And the surgeon is going to operate on this operative, uh, the site of the uh, hip. Uh, let's share uh, an example of uh, an example of orthopedic joint replacement, especially this one is a knee joint replacement surgeries setup. Back table. On the left, you see the basin. Uh, uh, pitch graduated picture with acepto filled with uh, filled with uh, saline and labeled properly uh, suture material that is going to be used at the towards the end of the case needle driver and uh, add some tissue forceps knife uh, and knife blades uh tissue forceps and suture scissors marking pen and there's a needle counter there and we have assorted instruments laid out uh uh in a way this will be used the sequence is starting from here it'll go down this uh, way from left to right this is how this technology has got this set up. Nicely set it up such a way that this setup will work for the technologies all the way to the end of the case. Lab sponges are kept right here. As you can see, stacked right next to the basin. The all the reamer, the cutter, these are the cutting jig for alignment guide and jig for the knee cutting, uh, for cutting the tibia, cutting the femoral condyle with these drill bits and saw blade. Uh, these are battery operated saw blade. As you can see, battery package is, uh, uh, is attached to these, uh, uh, this saw blade, saw and the drill. And these are cutting jigs and components, trial, spacer, uh, tibial component, patella button, and patella component. And all of these are here laid out as an impactor. Uh, the femoral condyle uh, holder or, or femoral condyle grasper, impactor for uh, femoral condyle and tibial uh, uh, component. So trays are stacked here. This is a cement mixing uh, device. And this is all the assortment of power tools. Another saw, drill, and Jacob's chuck, and all these type of assortments are here. There are trays that is uh, uh, kept on the uh, the stand here, draped stand uh, for uh, reserve on hold. But this is the basic back table setup for knee replacement surgery or knee reconstruction surgery. So on the Mayo stand, basically they will have gloves and uh, tissue forceps and knife blade to start with, ronger and bovi suction to start with, and then they will come to the back table and pick up instruments at a time from the left to the right as the surgery uh, moves ahead, as the surgery progresses. So this is unique setup, a clean, and very methodical setup to work uh, for a total knee replacement surgery. All right, so now I am going to